Okay, so now what's the next stage of doing this? Well, we need to create our new image. So we need a new image created um, to be able to store this new thumbnail. So I'm going to say new underscore image, and this is going to equal image create true color. All this is all this function is doing is creating a new image with a true true type color to it. Um, that's important because we obviously want to maintain um, you know quality when we're creating a new image. So now we need to specify the width and the height. Now obviously we've already got the width and the height here sorted out, our new width and our new height. So we say new width and new height. Done. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to load in our original image as a JPEG image in order to use um, the function we're going to use next is image copy resized. So we need to load in our original image. So I'm just going to write image or let's call it JPEG so we uh, don't get in, you know messed up with this thing here, this uh, variable here. So I'm going to say JPEG or um, or you could say old image. Old image equals um, and the function we're using is image create from JPEG. So image create from JPEG image. So we specified our image in here, uh, which is the uh, value we're passing through get uh, through our URL. And we're creating a new image from this. So now we have the original image and we have the new image. So now what we can do is use a function called image copy resized. And what this is going to do is it's going to resize our image down with very specific uh, parameters in. So. This function, like with most GD uh, library functions, uh, in this sense, is takes a lot of parameters. So let's go through and we'll explain each one as carefully. Uh, well, I'll explain at least. Uh, I'll explain each one as carefully as I can. So the function is image copy resized. Okay, and this function takes 10 parameters. So we've got 10 parameters to put in here, four of which are the destination of X and Y, um, of the sorry, the uh, X and Y placement of the destination image and the X and Y placement of the source image. We don't need to worry about these. Uh, this is um, parameters three to six. So we don't need to worry about these. The first parameter we do need to worry about is the destination image. And the destination image um, in our case is our new image because we we want to create um, our thumbnail in this new image here um, the second parameter is the old image so that's fine this is why I've named the variables how they are because we can see now what we're doing we're, we're uh, resizing the new image to um, into the canvas of the oh sorry we're creating a new image here which we've done already and we're resizing the old image into the canvas of the new image. So essentially what we're doing is we've created the canvas for our new image which is with the new width and the new height and we're uh, applying our old image to this. Now obviously this isn't enough parameters, we need to specify things like the height and the width of the um, of the new and the, and the old image so we need to scale it down um, appropriately. Because what we're not doing is performing a command which is actually going to resize the image itself. We're, as the function is named, it we're image copy resize. So we're copying the old image to the new image, but just with different um, width and height. So the next three parameters, like I said, um, the four parameters are the destination X, destination Y, source X and source Y. We don't need to worry about these because they're just going from the top um, of the image, they're just going to go straight into the image. They're not going to be resized or moved. In, uh, sorry, they're not going to be moved anywhere. Okay, so the seventh parameter we've got destination width. So the destination width is obviously the new width, and the destination height is obviously the new height because this is the destination that we're creating our thumbnail at uh, inside this image, this new image. And then what we need to do is the source width and the source height, which is obviously the um, old width and the old height, but we have called these image width and image height. So image width, image height. Remember with the GD library, when you're specifying widths and heights, the width always comes before the height. Okay, so now we are pretty much done, but there's just one last thing we need to do. And we uh, need to use the function image 
JPEG. And this is going to display the um, image out on the screen for us. So, uh, sorry, new image. So, image JPEG, new image. This is the new image that we created with the new width and the new height, so i.e., the thumbnail. And um, now, what we're doing is we're just outputting it onto the screen. So, let's uh, uncomment this header here, with changing our content type. And let's go ahead into our browser and test it. So, fingers crossed. Okay, great. So what we've done here is we've returned the image with the scale down um, height and width. And you can see that it's maintained its aspect ratio. It hasn't been distorted or uh, elongated or stretched width ways or anything like that. So let's still go back and have a look at the original image. And you can see that it's still sort of intact there. Um, but when we go back to this page, we have resized our image. Okay, so the last stage is to save this file so it can be processed, so you can process this URL um, sort of on the fly if you like. So we, what we want to do is we want to save the file itself. So we just simply add a comma onto the um, inner parameters of this function, this image JPEG function, and we just specify a file name. So the file name I'm going to choose is the original image name, which is image, and I'm going to append on um, and I'm going to say dot thumb dot jpeg. So this is going to be phone dot jpg, and this is going to be dot thumb dot jpg. So it's going to create a new jpeg image. Remember the dot jpg at the end is really important because then it's a recognizable extension. So let's go ahead and run this page. Let's refresh. Okay, so now what's happened is we've um, changed. We've um, We've taken this phone.jpg, we've processed it through, we've resized it, but then we've saved it as phone.jpg.thumb.jpg. So this is an, an image in my browser. You can see that I can pick it up and drag it and copy it, copy it and paste it, whatever I want to do. So this is a, a, a an image in itself of the resized thumbnail. So now you can see how useful this function could be. Um, I wouldn't recommend calling it index.php, call it something like generate thumbnail.php and then you can simply run an image through using this get um, variable and um, then you can process the image and output it to a file name of your choice. Hi this is Alex from phpacademy.org and this is a video tutorial for the new Boston. Now in this video tutorial series we're going to be looking at Ajax. Now Ajax isn't specifically relative to PHP, however many PHP applications um, or websites you may create with PHP can be massively enhanced with Ajax because what we can do is we can create applications that allow us to say click a button or type a, uh, some kind of data in and we can grab data from a database or a text file or um, just simply include a include um, a uh, a PHP file onto our page that gives us dynamic information so updated information and Ajax has been used for a long time now um, and recently started to um, be created more popular we're in 2011 when this video is being recorded so uh, it's extremely popular on the web so why is Ajax special uh, what makes it special and I'm just going to talk to you a bit about the features of Ajax that create uh, that create a more dynamic web experience, if you like. Now, Ajax first of all stands for asynchronous, asynchronous JavaScript and XML, and what this means is that we can process um, data through uh, well behind the scenes of our website um, just using uh, JavaScript and um, XHTML as well, or HTML. So um, it asynchronously um, sends a value and retrieves something without having to reload the entire page. So if you think about a, a web page in general, you have, uh, let's say we're on index.php at the moment, you have some data on a page and you click a, a, a form, for example, to maybe submit a registration. Or you might just click a button to retrieve a list of values that you've uh, typed in a search box, for example. So you may have a search box on your web page um, this may return a value. Now usually you would use um, a form uh, submit, so you would say, let's just break out of our PHP tags, we would say form action equals uh, something, uh, method equals something, uh, come down here, we would enter, we would create a submit button, 
and what would happen is when we press this submit button we're taken to the form action now what we can do is we can specify buttons just on their own and what these do is they will send a um, um, they will uh, call a function inside of our header so if we were to set up a standard page like this sorry start the head tag and then end the head tag start the body end the body so a very badly written out um, HTML document here we've got um, head we can um, include some JavaScript so we could say script type equals text forward slash JavaScript and then end that there so this is a general um, setup for a website we've got an input button here what we can do is we could say on click equals and then we could call a function within JavaScript so we could say um, update um, page for example now up here we may have a function in JavaScript called update page which is going to call uh, and work with Ajax we're not going to give any examples in this introduction video but it would call um, this function and it would process some kind of Ajax um, code if you like or, or the methodology or the methods uh, used with Ajax to actually update a certain area on the page so for example below here we could have a div ID uh, equals um, page for example okay so this might grab an, a PHP document and it might update um, this div with the contents of the PHP document so this is obviously a very basic example we're just updating uh, perhaps some data from a PHP file and popping it onto a page but using this method we won't actually um, refresh the page now I've just given you sort of like an example of how it may work this this code obviously is is not might not be how we actually do it but um, it's very similar and this is just the general method that we will use uh, in order to update values without having to refresh a page so why can this be useful in everyday applications well for example when we go to uh, over to Google you'll notice that we have a feature in Google called auto suggest and what happens is is when we uh, I'll just briefly explain when we um, when we look at Google we type in a value into a text box which is uh, placed in the center of the screen so we start typing um, let's say PHP now what uh, what Ajax um, or the, the part that Ajax plays in this is what it will do it will automatically get the updated um, value of this text box so let's say we just start typing uh, we'll create an in input type so we can uh, search box sorry input type equals text and uh, name equals search box okay so what's gonna happen is is we're gonna start typing something for example into here so we might start typing PHP now as we type P it's gonna get the value of this text box which is equal to P at the moment and it's gonna search a database for the most popular um, searches relating or that start with P then we're gonna say PH so it's gonna and then it's gonna then re-update itself without obviously having to refresh the page because if you were to refresh the page every time you type something uh, you'd have absolute pandemonium 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 and it would not work so we've got PH and then we type P and it's gonna find the most um, search for results uh, with PHP so that's just generally oh that's just generally how it works so um, this uses Ajax Google or Google suggest uses Ajax and a variety of other websites too as well Facebook uses Ajax and this is uh, this uses it in a really interesting way when you're looking at a Facebook say news feed you'll be looking at the news feed uh, straight up and down and you'll have your mouse still now you look at your you look at your page and nothing will update. Then what you'll do is you'll move your mouse very slightly. It only has to literally be one pixel that you move your mouse, and your page will actually update. Now what happens here is we have an on mouse move or on mouse event um, trigger. So when you move your mouse bits of the page are updated using Ajax so it will be automatically updated from the database using Ajax the same with Twitter as well when you create a new tweet you might tweet in a box like this and click submit or hit enter and it will automatically show your most recent tweet it won't actually refresh the page uh, the same with probably the feeds in Twitter um, you'll automatically see new feeds 
uh, open. So this is why we use Ajax and why it's so important on the web today when we don't want boring static websites. We want everything to be easy to use and dynamic. And that's another reason we use Ajax is because it's really easy to use a website that's been um, enhanced with Ajax particularly with PHP where we're gaining values from a database we can do other things with Ajax but for now we're going to be looking at Ajax closely related to PHP because Ajax is so closely related to PHP where we grab things from the database obviously it can be used with other web programming languages but obviously because this is PHP tutorials we're going to be looking at Ajax and PHP so that's a bit about Ajax how it works what it is why we should use it now in the next um, in the next tutorials coming coming up we're going to be looking at how to um, first of all the basics of that and then we're going to be creating some sample programs to grab some data from databases depending on what we do on the page hi this is Alex from phpacademy.org and this is a video tutorial for the new Boston now in this video tutorial series we're going to be looking at Ajax. Now Ajax isn't specifically relative to PHP, however many PHP applications um, or websites you may create with PHP can be massively enhanced with Ajax because what we can do is we can create applications that allow us to say click a button or type a, uh, some kind of data in and we can grab data from a database or a text file or um, just simply include a include um, a, uh, a PHP file onto our page that gives us dynamic information so updated information and Ajax has been used for a long time now um, and recently started to um, be created more popular we're in 2011 when this video is being recorded so uh, it's extremely popular on the web so why is Ajax special uh, what makes it special and I'm just going to talk to you a bit about the features of Ajax that create uh, that create a more dynamic web experience, if you like. Now, Ajax first of all stands for asynchronous, asynchronous JavaScript and XML, and what this means is that we can process um, data through uh, well behind the scenes of our website um, just using uh, JavaScript and um, XHTML as well, or HTML. So um, it asynchronously um, sends a value and retrieves something without having to reload the entire page. So if you think about a, a web page in general, you have, uh, let's say we're on index.php at the moment, you have some data on a page and you click a, a, a form, for example, to maybe submit a registration. Or you might just click a button to retrieve a list of values that you've uh, typed in a search box, for example. So you may have a search box on your web page, um, this may return a value. Now usually you would use um, a form uh, submit, so you would say, let's just break out of our PHP tags, we would say form action equals uh, something, uh, method equals something, uh, come down here, we would enter, we would create a submit button, and what would happen is when we press this submit button, we're taken to the form action. Now what we can do is we can specify buttons just on their own, and what these do is they will send a, um, um, they will uh, call a function inside of our header. So if we were to set up a standard page like this, sorry, start the head tag, and then end the head tag, start the body, end the body, so a very badly written out um, HTML document here. We've got um, head, we can um, include some JavaScript. So we could say script type equals text forward slash JavaScript and then end that there. So this is a general um, setup for a website. We've got an input button here. What we can do is we could say on click equals and then we could call a function within JavaScript. So we could say um, update um, page for example. Now up here, we may have a function in JavaScript called update page, which is going to call uh, and work with Ajax. We're not going to give any examples in this introduction video, but it would call um, this function and it would process some kind of Ajax um, code, if you like, or, or the methodology or the methods uh, used with Ajax to actually update a certain area on the page. So for example, below here, we could have a div ID uh, equals um, 
page for example okay so this might grab an a PHP document and it might update um, this div with the contents of the PHP document so this is obviously a very basic example we're just updating uh, perhaps some data from a PHP file and popping it onto a page but using this method we won't actually um, refresh the page now I've just given you sort of like an example of how it may work this this code obviously is is not might not be how we actually do it but um, it's very similar and this is just the general method that we will use uh, in order to update values without having to refresh a page so why can this be useful in everyday applications well for example when we go to uh, over to Google you'll notice that we have a feature in Google called auto suggest and what happens is is when we uh, I'll just briefly explain when we um, when we look at Google we type in a value into a text box which is uh, placed in the center of the screen so we start typing um, let's say PHP now what uh, what Ajax um, or the, the part that Ajax plays in this is what it will do it will automatically get the updated um, value of this text box so let's say we just start typing uh, we'll create an in input type so we can uh, search box sorry put type equals text and uh, name equals search box okay so what's gonna happen is is we're gonna start typing something for example into here so we might start typing PHP now as we type P it's gonna get the value of this text box which is equal to P at the moment and it's gonna search a database for the most popular um, searches relating or that start with P then we're gonna say PH so it's gonna and then it's gonna then re-update itself without obviously having to refresh the page because if you were to refresh the page every time you type something uh, you'd have absolute pandemonium 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 and it would not work so we've got PH and then we type P and it's gonna find the most um, search for results uh, with PHP so that's just generally oh that's just generally how it works so um, this uses Ajax Google or Google suggest uses Ajax and a variety of other websites too as well Facebook uses Ajax and this is uh, this uses it in a really interesting way when you're looking at a Facebook say news feed you'll be looking at the news feed uh, straight up and down and you'll have your mouse still now you look at your you look at your page and nothing will update. Then what you'll do is you'll move your mouse very slightly. It only has to literally be one pixel that you move your mouse, and your page will actually update. Now what happens here is we have an on mouse move or on mouse event um, trigger. So when you move your mouse, bits of the page are updated using Ajax. So it will be automatically updated from the database using Ajax. The same with Twitter as well. When you create a new tweet you might tweet in a box like this and click submit or hit enter and it will automatically show your most recent tweet it won't actually refresh the page uh, the same with probably the feeds in Twitter um, you'll automatically see new feeds uh, open so this is why we use Ajax and why it's so important on the web today when we don't want boring static websites we want everything to be easy to use and dynamic and that's another reason we use Ajax is because it's really easy to use a website that's been um, enhanced with Ajax particularly with PHP where we're gaining values from a database we can do other things with Ajax but for now we're going to be looking at Ajax closely related to PHP because Ajax is so closely related to PHP where we grab things from the database obviously it can be used with other web programming languages but obviously because this is PHP tutorials we're going to be looking at Ajax and PHP so that's a bit about Ajax how it works what it is why we should use it now in the next um, in the next tutorials coming coming up we're going to be looking at how to um, first of all the basics of that and then we're going to be creating some sample programs to grab some data from databases depending on what we do on the page hi this is Alex from phpacademy.org and this is a video tutorial for the new Boston now in this tutorial we're going to be looking at opening up a another file using Ajax so I've got my file over here called include.ink.php and this contains PHP code because we're talking about um, Ajax relative to PHP we have created this what well, I've created this PHP document called include.ink.php which has PHP code inside it so eventually as we progress through the Ajax series what we're going to look at 
is opening um, um, a file uh, that's going to say maybe grab some values from a database or something like that and eventually we'll learn how to produce dynamic content so when a user say moves the mouse button we update um, say index.php page with relevant data or when we type something we update with it with relevant data from a database but before we do this what we need to think about is how we're actually going to open um, a file without refreshing the page so as you know in PHP we can use things like um, include and then we can uh, include a specific a specific file, so we've got include ink.php, but this is useless to us because um, it's only including the contents of the file, we're not triggering anything. What we could do is we could create a form um, under here or a button under here which would uh, take us to the page. So we could say input type equals submit, and then we could say on click, and then we can incorporate some JavaScript in here. So we could say window dot location equals index.php um, show equals uh, include for example and then what we could do is we could come down and we could say if is set dollar underscore get because we're passing a get variable called show so the get variable show could go in there then we could say include oh sorry <laughs> it's a combination of include and echo there uh, include dollar underscore get show so what we can do is we can um, well, we could pass uh, include.ink.php there. So we're passing a variable through when we click on a button, include.ink.php is then going to be checked to see if some, anything exists and then it's going to include the relevant file. So here what we can do is if we go back to our page, we can click on submit and that will include um, our file. However, we want to do that without refreshing the page. You notice if we go back and we click on submit, you see that we've refreshed the page and we've come up with, uh, we've, we've basically gone on to index.php again but with this show variable here so what we want to do is we want to achieve a similar effect to this however we don't want to refresh the page and we're going to be dealing with uh, divs as well so we're going to have a, a, a div and uh, this is going to be filled with some content from include.ink.php so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, a standard outline for an HTML document. So I'm going to create some head tags, some body tags here, and obviously our root HTML tags at the end. Inside head, we're going to be put, putting all the JavaScript. Um, inside body, we're going to insert the button uh, and the div itself. So we're not actually writing any PHP in this file, but the point of the tutorial is to show you how we can use Ajax to um, load in this include uh, file which is a PHP uh, document and has PHP code inside of it. So the first thing we want to do is create what we want to show on the website, uh, on the page rather. So I'm going to put another input button and that's going to be submit like, we'd like I've just shown you in the previous example. However, um, this time I'm going to say on click equals load. And this is going to call a function that we're going to write up here in a minute in our head um, uh, in, inside some script tags. So uh, we're going to declare that we want to uh, write some JavaScript code. And then we're going to uh, call this function when we, when we click the button. So we'll test this out in just a moment. But for now, as well, I want to put a, an, an ID and I'm going to give it the, uh, a div, sorry, and I'm going to give it the ID a div. Um, and then we're going to close it there. We're not going to write any content in here. Okay, so we're not writing any content in here. We're going to rely on us clicking this button, the load function up here, loading content into this div, and we're going to do that without refreshing the page at all. So you may have gone onto a website where it says maybe uh, click here, or, or there's um, a column of uh, options, and you click it, and it instantly gives you the content on to the right of it. This is uh, very similar. Uh, thing that we're doing here but we're loading in this include.ink.php into this div again without refreshing the page so let's uh, come up here and create our script tag so script type equals and that's text forward slash javascript so we can tell our browser that we've got um, javascript code in here um, now let's give this a test so I want to test when we click on uh, this button here uh, that we um, execute or call a function called load so let's just set up our load function here so we've got function load here, we're not giving it any parameters, but what we are going to do is just alert 
works so we know that everything works so when we click on this button we've got this on click event here then we're going to call the function load we're going to come up here call this function and we're going to uh, create an alert so let's um, go back to our index.php page Okay, so we've got our submit button, we click it and we get a uh, message saying works. So we know that everything works. Now what we can do is get on with creating our Ajax code. Now we need to do a variety of checks. This is pretty standard code and I'm not going to explain uh, exactly how it works and what each function does. Um, but follow along the example and you'll generally get an idea of what's happening. I will explain most elements as much as I can possibly explain in the video. Uh, without confusing myself, um, we'll go along and we'll write this out. So the first thing we need to do is check for um, an, a response. So we need to say if window dot and we need to say XML HTTP request. Okay, so uh, we're checking for uh, an XML HTTP request. If so, we do something, otherwise we do something else. And the rest of our code is going to go down here. So if so, then we're going to create a new variable called XML HTTP, and that's going to equal new XML HTTP request. And remember the parentheses at the end. Okay, so now that we've done that, we can use this XML HTTP to, uh, well, in the rest of our code. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say else, and this is going to handle it for different browsers. So for some browsers, this will be the case, and some uh, this will be the case. So you can say HTML access, uh, HTML, sorry, XML HTTP equals new. But this time we're going to create an active X object, and the reference here is um, Microsoft dot XML HTTP. Now it's very important that you understand that everything I'm writing is case sensitive. So when I come to test this at the end of the tutorial, when we're finished writing out our code, you might find it, it hasn't worked for myself. So I'm going to have to go back and check. So I may have um, created maybe, um, I mean, with variable names, it obviously doesn't matter. But with things like this, it needs to be a capital XML, capital H, small TTP, and a capital R, and then the rest is small. So it has to be, it, well, it is case sensitive, so you need to watch out for that. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is check for a change of state. So we're going to create an if statement, and I'm going to say if, um, oh no, I'm not, sorry, no, no, I'm not checking this way. What I'm saying is XML HTTP dot, and we're going to write on ready state change. So on ready state change. Now, we're going to equal this to a function. So this might be not, this might not be something that you've seen before. We're equaling this to a function, and then what we're doing is we are creating the block for our function. So we're saying that on ready state change. So when the state has changed, we're going to perform what's in here. We're going to perform the action in here. Okay. So uh, on ready state change equals function. So this is a function that we're going to um, create or run rather if um, our state has changed. So now we need to do a couple of checks. We need to check that the eight, um, sorry, XML HTTP dot um, ready state is equal to four. And we also need to check that the XML HTTP um, status is 200. So we just type status equals 200. Sorry, double equals there. Let's just pull this in as well. Okay, so if it does, we're going to continue. So this is just doing a couple of checks to make sure we've got correct codes being sent back. Um, and now inside of here, we need to do what we need to do. So what we essentially need to do is we need to check, um, or sorry, we need to insert some HTML data into this div tag. And by HTML data, this could be a PHP file because when we echo out hello, this is essentially HTML data. We can also read in, um, we can also read in uh, text files, uh, things like that to our div as well, but we're just gonna be focusing on PHP like I said. So now what we do is we say document, so we're referencing something on our document, and we're saying get element by ID. And getting element by ID takes an element from a page by its ID. Obviously we've set an ID of a div to this div here. So in here we can type a div. 
and then we're going to say dot inner and HTML in capitals, and we're going to equal this to XML HTTP dot response text. So when we um, when we send a request here uh, up here. We on a, on the uh, change of state. We are checking the ready state and the status of the page to make sure it's not empty. So this 200 here is making sure it's not empty, and then we're getting the element a div, and we are changing the inner HTML of this div down here, and that's going to be the response text. So now under here we need to send what we want to put into this. We want to send what we want to put into our div essentially. So what we do is we say XML HTTP dot open. Now what we're doing is we're opening um, with get. So we're opening get, we're getting the data from the page, we're not posting anything, we just need to get the contents of this page. Um, and that is include.inc.php. Okay, so the last parameter is whether we are going to do this asynchronously. So we're just going to write true in here. And then underneath we write x, x, sorry, xml http dot send. So what this is essentially doing is it's taking the contents of this file here and we're placing it into this div using this line here. And when we send, this is going to be picked up here. So um, everything's working, uh, hopefully working as it should be. So let's go ahead and test this. So what should happen is we click on the submit button. We um, call this load function. We check, uh, depending on different browser types, the um, XML HTTP request and um, Put the valid um, the valid uh, instance of this into it. We check for a state change here. Um, we check the ready state and the status. So make sure the page doesn't return nothing. And um, we get the element a div and put inside put some HTML inside of this. And that's the response text from this. And we're taking this value from here. So we're we're sending the data uh, essentially straight to this div. So let's go ahead and refresh this page and test to see if this works. So what should happen is when I click submit, we should have um, the value hello being um, being output underneath it because what we're essentially doing in include.index.include.ink.php is we're just echoing out hello. So this should just echo out the contents of our PHP page. Let's try and see if it works. Okay, it's not working. Uh, there's a surprise. So let's go. Um, let's go back through our page and just have a look at everything and check that everything's okay. So let's have a look down. Um, make sure everything there is okay. Yep. Let's just have another try of um, refreshing the page. Oh, I think it actually did work. Yeah. Okay. I think there was just a slight delay in loading the data in. Um, so uh, I think, yeah, it did work. So you can see now we've just uh, retrieved this value. And what's more important, you've obviously noticed that by clicking Submit, the page hasn't refreshed itself at all. So click Submit, the page doesn't refresh itself. It just loads in uh, the contents of um, the contents of include.inc.php. OK, so now what happens if we want to make this load uh, function a bit more dynamic? So, for example, I w might want to uh, load in um, a specific file into a specific div. So I need to specify some arguments in my uh, load function. So the first one I might want to specify is the um, div that I want to load the uh, data into. So this, in this case, it would be a div. And then uh, the second pr uh, parameter or argument I might want to give it is the file that I want to load into this div. So that might be include.ink.php. Now this function would be a lot better because it means you could reuse it over and over again. And it would be really, really useful if you had a page where you wanted to uh, insert some dynamic data into many different divs and wanted to do this using lots of different buttons or in actual fact when the mouse was moved or something like that. So um, we are going to... Um, use this uh, to our advantage and create a uh, fully rounded function that's going to allow us to do this. So we want to load into ADIV, this is the first argument, and in, and uh, load this file into ADIV, which is the second argument. So let's go ahead and make the change, first of all, in this load part of the function. If you're used to functions, then this will be pretty straightforward, but um, I'm going to go through it anyway, just so we know what we're doing. So the first one is uh, the div. And the second one is the uh, file. 
Okay, so we've got the div which we're loading it into and the file. So all we need to now do is go down and make the changes. So the div here is specified as a div, but we want this to be dynamic depending on what we pass uh, through this function. So this is just going to be the div. Now let's go down. This uh, again needs this this uh, file here needs to be um, dynamic. So this is the file. So it's really as simple as that. Now what we've done is we've created ourselves a dynamic function that's going to load any file into any div. So let's go ahead and change the name of this div. So uh, another div, for example. Um, we've just changed the name of it to demonstrate the use of this function. So now let's change this to another div. And uh, we'll keep the include file as it is, but we'll change the content. So hello everyone. OK, so let's go ahead and come onto our page. When we click submit, what this is going to do, let's just go to our page source. Oh, I'm tra translating it to English. All right, let's go to page source um, and go down. So it's a loading um, into another div and it's loading this file here into another div. So let's go ahead and click submit. And you can see that hello everyone has been loaded into uh, the div another div. Let's go down and have a look there. And we've got div ID equals another div. Now, because of the nature of Ajax and the way it works, you can see at the moment that um, there's nothing contained within this div, even though in here we have the text, hello everyone. So there's no need to worry about this if you're looking at a source file thinking, oh, nothing's in there. You, it won't actually modify the HTML because it's um, asynchronous and it does it without refreshing the page. We're not going to be updating the HTML code as well. Um, so you won't find uh, your text that you are putting into your div actually within your div. It's just going to be done on the page uh, itself um, to the people that are viewing it. So it's not actually going to be put into here. So what we've done in this tutorial is we've looked at uh, creating a function that loads in um, two, pr two arguments um, and this is on the click of a button but this could be on any HTML state so it could be uh, when you uh, start typing in a um, text field so we're going to look at tutorials later on that deal with more complex PHP uh, that is going to put um, values onto our page depending on what we type or when we move the mouse etc etc um, so we've gone through and we've checked for certain things set this HTML XML HTTP variable we've checked for the state change and uh, upon the state change we've modified the contents of the div and then here what we've done is we've specified the file that we want to open and we've used this send to send the data so that's basically simply opening a file using Ajax uh, this is pure Ajax so we're not using anything like jQuery here um, jQuery is easier however I do recommend you do learn this and learn how to do this because uh, it's going to be really useful uh, later on when you um, want to write in pure JavaScript and use Ajax um, as it should be, as it's, as it's intended to be. Um, so that's it for um, in including a file uh, using Ajax without refreshing the page. Hi, this is Alex from phpacademy.org and this is a video tutorial for the new Boston. Now in this video we're going to be looking at Ajax and using um, a GET request to a specific page in order to return an auto-suggest style search box. So you may have seen on uh, Google, um, if you use Google as a search engine, you may see that when you type in um, a value or you start to type in a value you will actually receive a list of um, recommended results based on what you've typed so if I was to start typing in PH it may automatically suggest PHP for me because this is a popular result and uh, it is displayed underneath the text box now there's a couple of things we won't be doing in this tutorial because this is just demonstrating how we can use Ajax with PHP. We're not going to be using CSS to make everything look pretty because we're going to be focusing on the Ajax relative to the PHP. What we're also not going to be doing is searching it by popularity. What we're going to be doing is we're going to use a, um, a qu uh, an SQL query to match um, or, or, or match 
every every time we press a key down so if I'm typing PHP here every time we press a key we're gonna match what we've already got to the rest of a string inside a database so let me just make this a bit clearer uh, let me just open up my uh, database that I've already created okay so if you haven't already created a database go into PHP my admin or whatever you use to uh, administer your MySQL database and you want to create a database called Ajax or something of your choice but just remember I'm going to be using uh, the name Ajax now we need a table inside of this database called names or obviously whatever you choose to call it but remember to add it in in the tutorial um, in the substitute of what I've named it and we have two field names we've got ID and we've got name now ID is just something I always tend to put in a database just to keep track of um, how many records there are and also um, also the ordering of which each record was entered so you can see that I've got a few names uh, that I've already entered in let's just take a look at the database structure so you can you can see how I've set this up we've got ID which is a primary key and it's an auto increment so every time we in insert a record it will um, it will uh, increment this value and name is just a variable character of 40 so that's all you need to do and then you want to put some dummy data inside your database uh, inside your table sorry and the data that you want to put in is that the data which uh, you know put put a few names in first of people you might know etc and then choose a name that already exists but with say a different surname for example so when we start to type let's just go back to context when we start to type Alex like that we'll get Alex Garrett and Alex Malcolm returned and then when we continue to type we might type Alex G then Alex Malcolm will no longer match what we've uh, currently typed so Alex Garrett will be returned so hopefully that makes sense if you can though um, add as many um, rows as you can in here as many records as you can in here to get the best effect from this possible so what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be creating a text area uh, or a text input box first of all um, and we're not going to have a submit button obviously because as the user types we want the auto suggest to work so we're going to do this via Ajax and our search.inc.php file is going to do the searching for us so in index.php let's just set up um, first of all our page the head of our page the body of our page then we'll set up the um, the area that the user can type in will also then set up the div area where the uh, results will be shown so let's go ahead and create our HTML root tags let's go and do the head tags just underneath that and body so obviously feel free to properly set up your document I'm just uh, keeping this really clean and simple uh, for the purposes of this tutorial so in body the first thing we want is a form we don't need an action and we don't need a method because we're not posting this form this form is just going to uh, the reason we're creating this form is so we can access uh, the elements inside the form so I'm going to give it an ID and I'm also going to give it a name so the name and the ID we're just going to call this search and I'm going to end my form there so inside the form I want some text to tell me uh, what to do so I'm going to say type a name and then underneath that I'm going to have an input box and this is type text the name of this can be a keyword because this is the place where we're typing keywords and then we want this on mouse down um, up, sorry sorry on key down um, what do we call it um, event so we want an on key down event and what we're going to do is every time a key is is pressed so every time we're in focus on this in this um, let's just preview it so I can explain a bit better so every time we're in focus on this um, we can um, we'll, we'll click in here and we'll start to type something um, and every time we press a key down so I'm pressing a key down now the um, the Ajax page or the Ajax code will load in this this um, search.inc.php page that we have here so let's go ahead and make up the name of our function now so we can uh, put that into uh, our JavaScript in a moment. So I'm going to call this um, find match. We'll call it find match. Okay, so obviously now that we have this um, 
find match function we're going to need to add that function up here a bit later on um, inside uh, JavaScript so let's go and create our div we need to create an ID for our div as well because remember within the Ajax we um, get this element by its ID and then we load some HTML into this and this HTML is going to be the returned values that we find from search.ink.php so let's go ahead and give this a name. Um, I'm going to call it results so we know exactly what we, we're talking about. So we've got this search form, we've got this keyword field, we're finding the match every time we press a key down and we're displaying that in results. So we've uh, named the um, elements of our, uh, of our page correctly so we can sort of remember them a bit later on. So like I said, we've got this find match function that we need to create up here. So let's go ahead and open up a script tag and then go and close our script tag and the type is obviously text forward slash JavaScript because Ajax is um, JavaScript and XML okay so now what we're gonna go and do is uh, create our function name which we've called down here find match so we can just start a new function Oh, in the wrong place there so we can start a new function called find match it's not going to take any parameters because uh, this function is unique to this field. So we don't need to take any uh, parameters to say, you know, pop it somewhere or like we did in the uh, the example where we um, where we created our Ajax code last time. We we put two um, arguments in to here to say um, what file to grab and also uh, where to put the data. So we don't need to do that because we can we can do that f just for the purpose of this of this um, this search. But you're welcome to modify obviously the find match to suit your website's uh, needs. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is check for a uh, request. So we do uh, we say if window dot xml http request so remember the case sensitivity of this we've got capital H XML and H and a capital R here uh, the um, the code inside of here is going to be case sensitive so be very 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 careful or your um, program may not run correctly so uh, we've got an if and then we're gonna have else there so this is just for different browser support but in this case we say XML HTTP is equal to uh, new XML HTTP P request and then we put our parentheses on here otherwise XML HTTP is equal to a new um, ActiveX object so ActiveX object and we feed in one argument which is Microsoft dot XML HTTP in capitals okay so we've done that that set our XML HTTP variable. Now what we want to do is we want to check for the state, the ready state of our XML.HTTP because we're going to be uh, submitting data through to this. So we need to check for that. So what we do is we say XML HTTP um, and we say dot on ready state. And then what, what's happening is we're going to equal this to a function I'm going to have no parameters in this but the function is going to be inside of here so when um, when we are ready to do this uh, sorry this is on ready state change by the way I uh, just noticed that there so um, on uh, on on the state change of uh, our XML HTTP um, which is our uh, H XML HTTP request object we need to complete the function inside of these parentheses so the function is first of all we need to make a check so uh, we need to check the ready state and the status of this so we need to say if XML HTTP dot ready status is equal to uh, for and XML HTTP dot uh, uh, status sorry this is state I'm, uh, I'm confusing things so we've got ready state equals for and we've got the XML HTTP dot status is equal to 200 this is just to ensure that data is being returned um, if data isn't returned we don't need to carry out the following block inside here which is grabbing the element by ID which is the element that we're going to be putting the data into is our results div so what we're doing is we're saying document because we're speaking about the overall document uh, and then we're saying get ele oh, element by ID and we need to get the element by ID which let's go down here and check we have called this uh, results so I should have known that because I did name them so I could remember them okay so we need to type in results in here 
and then what we need to do is we need to um, say dot inner HTML and dot inner HTML is basically um, HTML inside of this div so we're changing this so we're making that equal to um, XML HTTP dot and its response uh, value or response text so the value of the text in response so X, X, XML HTTP dot response text okay so we're done with that for now now we need to come down and actually send this data so we need to test it first because we don't know if our uh, our code just around here works at the moment so the first thing we're going to do is XML HTTP and then we're going to say dot open and you will remember this from the last uh, tutorial hopefully we've got three parameters the first one is the method so we're using get and we're going to be using this um, uh, into this tutorial as well now is the file so we've got up here we've got search.ink.php there's nothing in it at the moment so search.ink.php and the next is if you want to uh, send this data asynchronously so we do so we're going to just type true by default it's true so you can leave it out but I always like to put it uh, just in there now we say XML uh, HTTP dot send and we're done so now what we can do is test this out so at the moment when we um, have a keyword down we uh, look for it in fact let's change this to um, search text it's a lot better so um, when we uh, press a key down we uh, run this function here that we've just created and what it will do is it will take the um, the value of the uh, or the HTML output from search.ink.php and put it into the results div. So we can simply test this just by going into search.ink.php and echoing something out. So let's give it a test. Let's uh, run on our page. Okay, so hopefully when I press type a key down, uh, we should have the value um, something uh, read back to us into that results div. So let's test it. Okay, it's not working. Oh yes, it is. Okay it's working so when we press uh, let's refresh the page and we'll just test that again so when we click in here and type something we're now loading the data from this uh, search.ink.php okay so we've done everything we need to with regards to this for now we're going to come back to it a bit later because what we need to do is we need to be sending um, the value that's currently in the text box in the search.txt here we need to be sending this consistently every time we type to this search.ink.php. So first of all, we're going to we're going to write some code inside uh, search.ink.php, um, and what we're going to do is we're basically going to return to the user what they're already typing. So we're going to test out every time they press a key, we're going to repeat it back to them inside this div, uh, much the same as when we did echo something. So this is pretty simple. We just need to come down here and we need to say if is set dollar underscore get and um, we're going to call this um, we'll call this search underscore text so if this is set we want to say search text equals dollar underscore get search text so let's echo that out now on its own if we were to access this search.ink.php file um, let's uh, just do that now so search.ink.php okay so we've entered this file there's nothing come up at the moment but now if we specify in here search text equals let's say Alex you'll see that that's written back to us on the page so what's going to happen is every time the user enters a character this um, URL is going to be accessed but via Ajax and we're going to put we're going to put um, the value uh, into it so let's say the user types an A the first round the uh, the page will be submitted like this then it'll be submitted like this then it'll be submitted like this and then lastly it'll be submitted like this so that's what's going to happen every time we press a key on our keyboard so let's go back to um, index.php okay so now what we want to do in here is we want to um, oh no we've done this now so we're echoing each um, each value that we're grabbing from this search text now what we need to do in here is we need to dynamically update this to be sent through to our PHP um, file search.ink.php so what we need to do is on here specify search underscore text 
equals something. So now we're going to press. We're now going to have a plus. So we're going to append on something from our page. Now what we want to append on from our page is the current value inside this text field. So let's go ahead and type document dot, and we're referencing it from our form. So our form is called search dot and then it's search underscore text, so search underscore text, and then we say dot value. So what we're doing now is every time we on key down, we're running this function, but now what we're doing is we're accessing search.ink.php, search underscore text equals, and the current value that's typed in. So now what should happen is we're returning in results, every time we press a key, the current value of the text field. So basically, like I said before, we're repeating this to the user. So let's go back to our page and test this out. I'm going to start to type my name. Okay. Right, okay, so this is what I wanted to happen. We have a problem here where we're only echoing out the, th the three characters. So why is this? Well, let's return back to our page and think about this carefully. On key down equals find match. What we actually want, uh, let's come and refresh again to make sure this is correct. Don't want to, uh... yeah, okay. So on key down, instead we want on key up because when the key is up, uh, we want to be uh, repeating this value. So A L E X, okay? So you can see that now we're deleting it, rewriting it in. I can type anything I want in here. Uh, so anything I type in here is just going to be simply repeated. So you can see how we can use this to our advantage because now what we can do inside search.ink.php is we can create a structured query that will search the database for the current value being typed in here. And that's going to uh, do a query for every time we enter a key. So it is going to significantly slow down um, our web page or our server load is going to be quite increased, if you like. Um, but I'll give you a couple of tips on how to uh, increase the, um, inc how to uh, stop this um, inside uh, search.ink.php. So we're going to be connecting to our database. So again, what ha what's going to happen is the value is going to be, um, well, everything in this page is going to be completely repetitively um, accessed. So we're connecting inside here to our database. Um, so, so we're just constantly connecting and everything like that. So um, We'll go ahead and do it anyway because this is just for the purposes of the tutorial. Um, the main goal is to get this to work first of all and then obviously the research comes later on how, how to speed up your uh, code. So let's just quickly connect to our um, MySQL server. We need three uh, properties. If you don't already know how to do this, there's another tutorial on it. So go back and watch that. Um, I have created a tutorial on connecting to databases, etc., etc. So um, I should have probably mentioned it at the start, but you should be comfortable um, with databases before attempting uh, this tutorial. So let's go connect to localhost. Uh, my username's root and I don't actually have a password so we're not going to bother with any error messages right now um, but uh, but you could probably put some validation in here in fact let's do let's do this so if uh, mysql connect uh, then we come down here um, so if this connection is successful basically let's put an at sign there so we don't get any any errors returned if it's not successful uh, then we want to say if uh, mysql select DB. Uh, our database, if you remember, let's just go back to our uh, PHP MyAdmin, it's called Ajax. So uh, put the database name that you're using in there. Uh, so if, um, if that's connected, then we do something here. So uh, we've connected to our database. Let's go and grab this and put this at the top of the page. Um, so we're grabbing, the first thing we're doing is we're grabbing the search text that's being typed. And then what we're doing is we're putting it into a variable called search underscore text.